This is iFanboy Pick of the Week, number 756, brought to you by Mac Weldon. Score big this singles day and get 20% off your first order when you visit MacWeldon.com slash iFanboy and enter promo code iFanboy. And iFanboy listeners just like you who are washing their hands, wearing their masks, and please stay indoors. Hello, welcome to iFanboy Pick of the Week, episode 756. I'm Josh Flanagan. Yes. <laughs> I think I just finished my name, and then I thought you would say yours, but that goes in the face of 750 plus other episodes, so... I was like, what happened? <laughs> and for a second, I was like, why is Connor being a dick right now? <laughs> well, like, did Josh just have a stroke and fall over? Was I, it, was, it was a mini. It was definitely some sort of mini <laughs> uh, neurological event. <laughs> we are a fanboy. Please stay indoors. We are a fanboy, and every week we read our stack of comics, and one of us picks the one that they like the best and call that the pick of the week. We talk about that book, other books from the week, the patron pick, listener mail, all those things, if we have time for that. I can't, that's not a promise. Yeah, no, no, it, we make no promises. It will be fun. Also, not a promise. I've we've already had fun, so maybe you had a little, so maybe we front loaded that. But I can't oh. promise it will be yeah. fun after this. No, that might have been no, it. God, no, <laughs> it's, it's just not a bet I can make. Uh, there yeah, will, be, I can tell you, there will be spoilers about the books we're talking about. So if you haven't read them, uh, it's, that's on you, uh, Connor. Despite the fact that I spent most of the day thinking I had pick of the week. <laughs> Connor had pick of the week, and like repeatedly, I thought, "Oh no, I have to do." The- oh wait, Connor has the pick, and like twenty minutes later, "Oh man, I got to do the." Nope, Connor has. I it's all messed up. Have you been to a doctor recently? I mean, have you been outside lately? <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, know, and I haven't either. I had a lot. Of, I think I had twenty six books this week, which was really great on a week where nothing was going on in the world that was taking my attention away from reading comics. <laughs> um, I did some double <laughs> but, reads. I did some like I have no idea what has happened in the last five pages. I got to go back. Yeah, I did that. I think I went book. Uh, this week, the pick of the week is Hellblazer: Rise and Fall, book two from Tom Taylor, Derek Robertson, Diego Rodriguez, Duran Bennett, Black Label from DC. This is the second of uh, three issues. The first issue was also pick of the week from Josh. And there was there was a lot of really fun and good books this week, but about halfway through this one, I was like, oh. Oh, this is the pick. I mean, unless something really is comes along after this, that's really good. I don't. I. It's a really fun book, Josh, and it's drawn really well. And I know we're <laughs> we're in love with the regular Hellblazer book, but this is a different. This is a different kind of Hellblazer. Mm-hmm. You know, the other one's very sort of dark and gritty, and and the art even reflects that. And this is more of a funny, while also being dark Hellblazer story. And I, I'm not the you know, a Hellblazer expert that you are, but I I really enjoyed this. And one of my favorite parts about Hellblazer stories is when, even for a moment, John drops the veneer and mm-hmm. has a genuine moment, like in this ep- issue where he talks to the ghost of the cop who died. Mm-hmm. You know, he gets to have a, he's alone in an alleyway, so no one gets to see the posture drop, but he gets to have like a genuine moment of feelings with people, whereas normally he's got that, that wall up and so there's a lot there's a lot of good things going on here he won he, he you know he his, his new sidekick is the devil and that was really fun and he's got a little squad going who's fucking with him yeah, constantly the, <laughs> yeah, the, the, he just he can't get his bearings with the devil because the devil's always always doing something to him so he's got the devil he's got this his cop friend he's got the ghost he's got a little strange yep. supernatural squad going as he investigates the murders of these powerful people in london and I, I just, I mean, it, it also, it, it helped that it was like twice as long as a regular book. So you really got to um, revel in it yeah. and really sink into it. And you got, I mean, we, we talk about it here and there. We're all resigned to the 20 page story at this point. But when you really can, can sort of sink your teeth into a story and get a lot of, a lot of it out, of it, it was, you know, this was just, it was, this was the most fun I had reading a comic all week by far. Yeah, I actually I think this, it might have been the first or second book I read, and and I there were several books I read this week where I was like, oh, I could make that pick of the week, and that was such a um, contrast to the past few picks I've had, which right. I didn't, which I didn't this week. Um, <laughs> and, you jinx yourself. Yeah, it, 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 a couple of interesting things. One is um, I think you know we'd said last time that Tom Taylor is is kind of channeling the Garth Ennis type of Hellblazer, yeah. um, and and that 
yeah, everything you just described really is that too. I mean, I mean, there is uh, it's sort of fun. Uh, it is serious and it's dark, but but then there's the bits of humanity. Like that's those are all the things that are the reason that I love Garth Ennis, and I think I think that he's really putting that in here. And the um, Derek Robertson art really backs that up. First of all, Derek Robertson always needs to have a main character who is smoking. That should be a thing. <laughs> you got Spider Jerusalem, you got John Constantine. It just works when he does that. Um, and then at the same time, it, uh, you know, when you talk about that that moment in the alleyway where he's sort of he just gets down on the ground for a second and and mm-hmm. and he's got the posture. And that same thing would happen in really great moments with Spider Jerusalem. You know, yeah. Spider Jerusalem had this whole swaggering uh, you know, posture and 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 every once in a while it would drop away and you'd see the real person. And I you know, I forgot from looking at Robertson's really good at that. Um he, Yeah, I'm looking he, at the panel where he first was down and, and the ghost says, I'm cold, John. He says, Yeah, I imagine you are, mate. And the the facial expression, the change, he's not arrogant, John Constantine mm-hmm. at that moment. You know, he's he's really sad about it. You flip the page and you see his eyes, they go back to cold, you know, when yeah. he stands up and does his little magic floop de whoops. Um <laughs> You know that and the sort of just the the coloring, the the sort of style of the whole thing, uh, it feels like an older kind of comic when we didn't have the same kind of rules that we do now, or at least the same uh, aesthetic that I guess is going through a lot of comics. And it, it is the strangest thing that we have this weird post golden era of Hellblazer right now. It 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 is. I don't know <laughs> why this is happening. Right. I I can't. I like. I I literally. I can't imagine anybody's buying this stuff. And, and well, clearly not the main book. No, which is you know, but it, to, I mean to be fair, that's super niche. I mean, it's a yeah. it's a book about British politics and culture, <laughs> you know, with a character that I don't know, maybe because there was a TV show and because of the animated series, like Constantine got a little extra life. I don't, I really, I don't understand who's buying what comics now. That's what I've come to realize lately. Like I, I don't well, understand. Tom Taylor, Tom Taylor clearly loves him because yes. he's also becoming a main character in Deceased. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. So, He's like the hero of the one of the issues this week. Yeah, and I didn't want to make this proclamation this week because I wanted to save for the, for the end of the year. But it's it's possible he's the character of the year. Wow! You know, between these two books plus deceased, but we can discuss that at the end. Wow. The o- the only criticism I have of this book, is, and it's a minor one, is, and this is a, this is a comic book wide criticism. But I feel like, and you can tell me if I'm wrong because you you know this better than I do. John Constantine shouldn't be so buff. Oh, I don't know about that. Does he have time for exercise? Because you don't all, get pecs like that unless you're lifting weights. All he does is smoke and drink. Mm-hmm. I feel like he right. doesn't eat. He's not going to be fat at all. Uh, no. Yeah, well, I think he would have like one of those like punk rocker bodies. Yeah, it's like, that's like sinewy and skinny. That's not like, yeah. you know, giant giant pectoral muscles but it doesn't matter i just there's one point where he's getting his, his ribs taped up and i was like he does have a vein going down his bicep that's probably a bit much does john really yeah have time for well you know weights? what outfit that he wears all the time the better in shape you are the better that outfit looks that's true but I'll, maybe he's got some magic shit he does that's what i was wondering if he like he's, he's magical in shape he's vain so so yeah so the, there's as we talked about last time i think uh you know, the, the 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 one of his childhood friends has been is is back as a demon, and we found out how that's happening here. And the demon has possessed him, and so he's murdering high status people in London. And, and John's investigating that because his friends got involved. And here, the the demon, the actual devil, Lucifer Morningstar, shows up because the demon doing the murdering is one of his sub demons who he he had sort of subjugated and then. Uh, but through John's spell work as a child, he he resurrected that demon. So the, the Morning Star is here to bring that demon back to hell. So now he's got this white suit wearing side you know, sidekick, who he plays sort of a Loki role. You know, where he's he's the trickster. He he um is constant as you said constantly fucking with John, and uh, well, it's really funny. He John thinks they had sex, and then there was a li- really cool moment I think in there where. He goes into the bank and somebody fucks with him, and, and because he's, you know, he's got. You, first of all, you're like, well, maybe the devil's a little charming, and he's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. And then his ego goes completely out of control, and he rips the guy's kidney out, and he's like, well, he's got another <laughs> one. Um, which I, all that was interesting, but then right. what really sold it for me was at the end. He came back. He's like, yeah, I'm sorry about that. 
<laughs> like he had a moment of humility, right. which I thought was a really interesting call to make. You know, like he, he kind of, like, how many people do you know in life who can't admit they made mistakes? And this is Satan. I just right. thought it was a really, I mean, it's a quote unquote humanizing moment, I, I thought. Right. There's a lot of laugh out loud moments. The kid is possessed by the devil. He's I mean, a demon. The kid, again, who's John's childhood friend, is not a kid. He's basically just a skin suit. And so yeah. at one point, he confronts John in the street, and John kicks him in the balls. Oh, yeah. I cut, so a bunch of, I cut that who, one out for a panel of the week. Put that two out. guys who were just randomly playing soccer in the background, which is kind of like, all right, um, go to beat him up because he just kicked a kid. But it was just, it was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, again, the art's terrific, and it's it's you know if you've never read Constantine before, you could you could totally read this book and sure and enjoy it. It's this really is, it's a really great book. This is like Dangerous Habits, uh, which is that first Garth Ennis story. You could read that having never read Constantine. In fact, that might have been the first. Th- no, that wasn't the first one I read, but uh, you could though. And I think yeah, it's a really good point. It's good comments. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see Derek Robertson. I, I mean, I don't, I know he does things here and there and he's got the tv show boys and what have you but it's nice to see him doing like some sustained you know panel to panel page to page comic work that fits him really well too like he's it's perfect for him yeah exactly everyone's a little dirty everyone's mm-hmm. a little stubbly you know everyone's smoking they, they, they're leaning into the smoking yeah he always has a cigarette he's so good at it i mean but he should like john should always have that i hate smoking but yeah. you know, you put it where you it's like Keith Richards has to have a cigarette, so does John Constantine. It's also part of the story, right? He gets lung cancer. Like that's yeah. That's like he it's not the, that's just for looks. One of it's Garth part of his art. One of Garth Ennis's most brilliant strokes. That's a yeah. devil story too, actually. It's part of his character arc, so mm-hmm. it makes sense. It's, it's the opposite of the T V show where <laughs> they weren't allowed to show him smoking. And a little uh, stupid like, short jacket. But occasionally he would be stubbing a cigarette out as the scene cut to him, Ugh. at least as a nod to the fact that he was just smoking. Anyway, that was a terrific issue. Hellblazer Rise and Fall Book 2 from Black Label, DC's uh, Vertigo, really. I'm very curious, Josh, what you thought of Thor number 9, Donny Cates, Nick Klein, Matt Wilson, Joseph Vino. This is the first issue of Prey. And the last issue, was it the last issue of the pick of the week? Mm, I don't know. It was definitely in the discussion. Yep. That was where it ended with Thor deciding he needed to reacquaint himself with his alter ego, the Dr. Donald Blake. I got to say, uh, in terms of a sort of twist on a story, so basically what you do is when you come in here, you, you have this idea that, well, yeah, well, what, where does Donald Blake go when he's not, uh, when Thor isn't him? So they, I, that's, a, that's a side question I, need to, I really need to ask you about, because yeah. you read slightly more... Thor comics than I did in the 80s. Yeah. 90s. Um, I think it's just something they never approached. I, but I thought that Thor became Donald Blake, not that they were two different people. Because mm-hmm. the explanation is Odin created this, this situation so that Thor could learn humility. Mm-hmm. And now, how would he learn humility if he wasn't actually Donald Blake? If he was just going, if he was just switching places with Donald Blake, he's still just Thor. In this fantasy world, that it was, we've see, I, about I here. think it was always sort of vague, and I think that Cates is sort of digging into. Well, wait a minute, what does this really mean? But I did get the sense they were kind of two different people. Like they did this with Jane Foster when she went into the Thor persona. Like she kind of had memories about it, but it wasn't as if she was the same person. I don't know. It's it's a it's a little strange, and if and, you know, like if you want to compare this to the Norse mythology book that was happening over at Dark Horse, like all that stuff's mm-hmm. a little weird. Like it's just yeah, no, I, I get it. It's just to me, it felt like they were writing themselves into a corner because the whole beginning of this issue is explaining the Donald Blake setup for people who weren't mm-hmm. reading comics in 1988 because right. he really hasn't been around for a but, long time. Yeah, and so the idea is. You know, Odin was grooming Thor for leadership, and Thor was an arrogant young god, and so he created this situation where Thor, you know, struck his hammer, and and then Donald Blake took his place. And I thought he just was there, like as a kid, I thought he was, you know, this he was Donald Blake. It was a it was a secret identity. I know. See, that's and, I think he wasn't driving the bus, right? But he was still sort of there. Whereas yeah. here, the idea is Donald Blake 
when Thor is Thor, Donald Blake is basically living in Pleasantville. You know, this sort yeah. of 1950s ideal suburb. And then when, when Thor <laughs> strikes his hammer, Thor goes to Pleasantville and Donald Blake comes to Earth or Midgard or Midgard or Asgard or wherever Thor is. And so then I thought, well, then how is Thor learning anything if he's just hanging out in the suburb, this fake suburb, while Donald Blake is... Like, it doesn't make any sense. But I, I think that's not exactly... They don't switch places. Don, like, Blake goes there when Thor's Thor. I, because I, then when he, when he strikes his hammer to bring back Donald Blake, he goes to the suburb in this issue. Oh, well, maybe that was, like, a, a little... All right. I just, I just got, I got that caught up in my head while reading this, and it sort of kept me from really enjoying it because I was like, none of this makes any sense. Um, the, the other problem I had is, I really liked this issue in terms of like, on its own, pure storytelling. The art's terrific. The, the story was really well taught. I just don't know if I liked what happened in it. I think there and was. I, I, I think I'm not supposed to like it, but that's a lot like, like the Tom King Batman. I think, which is sort of yeah. the, the same. I, I think I kind of had the same thought. Well. No, I, I enjoyed it, but I think that I'll, I spent more time sort of appreciating, like, well, this is a good setup for a story. You know, it's yeah. it's like when something makes you laugh as opposed to something that makes you say, that was very funny. You know, like you right. can sort of acknowledge that something is clever, but it's not making you guffaw. Um, I mean, I, the idea here is that, so, so again, Thor has decided he needs to bring back Donald Blake's personality, or Donald Blake, uh because you know he's he's losing his touch with the hammer. It's not. It's growing heavier for him. We, we, we even though we just did that story. So, I, um, and then we find out Donald Blake when he goes to the suburb. He sort of time has no meaning. He doesn't know how long he's there. He's just sort of living there. And we find out here that uh, he it's, uh, something happened, and he he became self aware while in the suburb. And so when Thor changes places with him, he finds this like hellscape that everyone's been murdered. There's like crazy messages scrawled in blood everywhere there the big uh snake creature that is constantly around the world tree that this whole is set up in the beginning that creature's dead it, like and then we see donald blake in our in the present uh who is like gone totally crazy with the giant beard and hair and he's got his weapons and and he's he, he's gone mad and i was like oh don't don't make donald blake into a bad guy that was what I. That was my problem with no, it. No, I get that. I think it's fine, but you know, if you're going with the hubris of the gods, it's pretty good. I get it. You uh, know, I, I, I think again, that's. It's like I, I can't make a qualitative sure problem with the book. The book was really well made, and it was suspenseful, and it was interesting, and, and the art was terrific. Beautiful. But I was like, oh, yeah, we got to ruin Donald Blake now. But you know what? We've had one swerve. You know, it was like I'm going to go back to this Donald Blake thing, and we're like, all right, cool, secret identity for Thor again. And then you know that like the next issue is not so fast. You know, right. there there could be other swerves in in mind. I think also I think that the thing happened at the end where when he he bangs the hammer and ends up there, that didn't work how it was supposed to. So I don't think it would have always put Thor into that world. I think that because Blake went mad, it fucked things up, or or maybe he just went to check it out. Like Thor knew about it. He's like, let's you know, like I feel like that wasn't typical and that was the first clue that something's going wrong obviously it was the first clue that something's going wrong um yeah so again it's just it's, the line is it's, it's been years since thor and the mm -hmm. brilliant surgeon donald blake have traded places so it's like oh so you know i don't know i don't know i i i do i like the commitment though i i really love the total commitment to the fact that he went insane yeah and killed the shit out of everybody there was a riding mower parked on a dude's head I mean, like what? it's there is a poodle eating someone's guts. Like there's a it, lot of people to kill. Yeah, it, it like he went he went full on, and I kind of appreciate that. And then he looks mm -hmm. like uh, he looks like angry Aquaman at the end of it. So yeah, I, I, I had complicated feelings about this issue. That's fair. I think it was I, yeah, I and mean, I think the point being that it was well done, and I think it was thoughtful. Uh, whether you enjoy it is a different thing, and I think that it, maybe it's. Too early to tell for you. I'm going with it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying I don't like. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. And well, again, that might be the point of it. And that's yeah. that's totally fine. I'm not. I'm not criticizing it for that. I'm just like, oh. Hmm. It was more, the bigger criticism for me was I don't understand the mechanics of Donald Blake Thor anymore, and I I thought I did, and now it's confusing and, and does it make sense in the I story? Mean, I mean, I was 11, so who knows. <laughs> Like, I don't know when the last time I actually read one of those stories. I just know that I liked it then because Thor had a secret identity. 
right. and it was a little weird. And I always liked it when it was like a little like not exactly clear. It wasn't exactly like Superman takes off his glasses and then he becomes that. It was different. It was weirder <clears throat> than that. Did you read uh, U.S. Agent number one? I tried to. I mean, I did. <laughs> but interesting. Christopher Priest, uh, George Zajanti, Carl Story, Matt Miller, Josephino. And so what's interesting is that I thought this was fun. I love. George Jonti's art. The art was wonderful. Um, but I think if you're of a certain age, the age that Josh and I are, you have a natural aversion to John Walker. Like for me, it's just, it's just, you, I can't, he can't be a hero to me. And so I don't feel that way. So I, I do because, you know, as a kid, he, he was the evil Captain America. He wasn't evil. Like, like he, he was, he got there eventually, but that wasn't necessarily his fault. He was a good dude, and I, I don't, I read those stories at the time, the Grunwalds, uh, and I, I don't remember where he went bad, but he isn't considered that way now because he basically did Captain America quit, or was he yeah, fired? Became, that's when he went. That's when he was the captain, and right? And so this was his uniform first. The, well, sort, not sort, this sort one, of, right? The original exactly. U.S. agent. Um, I think, yeah, when he quit, and so he said, "I'm not gonna like, rep- I'm not gonna work for Amer- the government anymore." And yeah. he got the really cool U.S. agent outfit. And when I was yeah. ten or eleven or whatever, I was like, "That is the coolest fucking outfit I've ever seen in my life." Right. First of all, and then Walker and the other Bucky were brought in, by, drawn by the amazing uh, uh, Kieran Dwyer back then. God, yeah. I loved. I can look at those issues right now, and they're beautiful. Um, they were hired by the government, you know, to be the new Captain America and Bucky. So they weren't right. bad guys. And then at some point, I think Walker went insane. Well, the thing is, he was he was jingoist Cap. He was, you know, he wasn't like well, a bad guy in the sense that he was super villain, but he was like over the top Captain America in the same way we see him I, here, where he's a little racist, he's a little, I think you know, a bit was, of an asshole. Well, that has a little to do, I think, with with you know, like the the story that. Priest, who's no longer Christopher Priest, by the way. He's just listed by his <laughs> single name, Priest. Uh, you know, like, that's an interpretation of it. But, like, I, I actually read I read the U.S. Agent miniseries that that uh, Mark Grunewald did, like, in the last year. Uh, mm-hmm. It was, like, a postscript to that. And it's not portrayed that way originally, which is why maybe I think of him this way. Like, he's over his head. He is from the South. He is sort of a, a bit more of a fundamentalist. But he wasn't a bad guy. He was over his head, and he was trying to do more than he was capable of. And, you know, there was hubris in that. Um, I've used that word twice now. I've made it again. And then he was also on the West Coast Avengers for a while. So, I mean, he's, I mean, I think the idea was that he's not Cap. and He's like the Guy Gardner of the Marvel Universe. There you go. I'd say that's... that's I mean, that's exactly sort of what he is... Um... In the same way that you you hated Guy Gardner, you know, yeah. it's, uh, I, I, I liked this issue. I was just lost I'm the whole curious. time. I, I really didn't, I, I, I wasn't sure what was happening. I feel like it, you know, the same thing, like it took up, it, it like took off from a place that I don't remember. So I wasn't really sure what my footing was. And then like, I, I didn't get who the Chinese guy was. I didn't get... He's, he's not Chinese. Oh, that's right. No, I'm sorry. He's not Chinese. He's Japanese. I think he was. Uh, he says his name at some point. But, oh, what not? His name yeah. is Japanese. He might, be, uh, he might be Vietnamese. It doesn't really matter. The joke right. is that Scott right. Walker doesn't care. He just calls him Chinese because he's, he's... Yes. That's who... I get that. He's, he's a good old boy. Yeah. It's fine. I don't know who his sister is. I think he's actually Korean, actually. He was smuggled yes. over the DMZ. You're right. I, I remember that. He's Asian, and, and they call yeah. him Chinese, and I got wrapped right up in it like a jerk. Um... I just I, I wasn't sure what the footing was for the story. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't I don't know what's going on here. It's it's John Walker is is uh paranoid. He thinks that some agency's got to get him, he doesn't know which one it is, so he's been constantly kidnapping pizza, pizza delivery boys because he, he's he's heard that the the bomb is coming in a pizza box and so he ends up trying to kidnap the wrong pizza boy who's sort of this middle aged uh Korean guy who is um much better at tactics than he is. And um, they, they go on a little adventure. I mean, it. I don't know what's. Ha- I don't know the big story here. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's happening. I enjoyed their dynamic. That's true. I, I like the I things. The art a lot. I like the things that happen. I like the art. I love that page where the guy comes to deli- to the door to deliver the pizza, yes. and the yeah. sort of gun comes out, and it's that nine panel grid, and then yeah. there's just a way over the top fight 
where <laughs> where Walker gets thrown through a wall and then they eat pizza and watch TV for a bit. Like it was all kind of wacky. Uh, it was funny, but in, in terms of the plot, like I loved how his his shield was wrecked immediately. Like he yeah. had a junk shield, you know. Uh, but other like like I, what's the plot? I'm not really sure. Um, the plot and the flashbacks to his sister didn't really mean anything to me. Um, but I had fun reading it. Like I didn't love it, and it wasn't like a pick of the weekend dinner. Yeah. But I was like, oh, well, that was fun. I was very excited to see it. I was like, oh, well, this is this is a story. He was also Walker was also in um, he was in Thunderbolts. He took over the prison after Luke yep. Cage left being the warden of the prison. Um, and that was kind of fun, too. I thought he was I thought he was paralyzed then, like, or he was missing his legs or something. He was in a wheelchair, I think. That doesn't matter, Josh. I know. I know. I just... Listen, you know. I'll never accept John Walker or like him. Okay. He was a usurper. Yeah, but he knew he wasn't Captain America, too. I want to go matter. back and read those as stories. As I have kid, those issues somewhere. I hated him. Really? Yeah, of course. He took over. He, he tried to take Cap's job. No, he was given Cap's job. It doesn't matter. As a kid, it doesn't matter. The distinction is if not you're, If you're, if you're uh, Captain America, got to go do his thing. I just like the uniform, I think. Black Widow number three. Black Widow number three. Kelly Thompson, Elena Casagrande, Jordi Belair, Corey Pettit. I've been really loving this series, and we've been talking a lot on the show about Marvel, the state of Marvel, you know, the, the big books. The big marquee books, maybe not necessarily doing it for us, but I think Marvel's really creative strength and my my personal enjoyment's happening on the fringes. And I'm not, I mean, it's weird to say like Black Widow is a fringe book and well. even U.S. Agent and I would even, I would even say Fantastic Four is a fringe book at this point because no it's not they're, not, they're not popular, but. Well, they're not in the movies. Right. And it's so the these, thing is like Black Widow is in the movies, but as a character in Marvel Universe comics, like she's a fringe character. I mean, you know, a... Captain Marvel is a great book. Like all these sort of, not the marquees, you know, mm-hmm. not. I think th- that's where Marvel's strength is right now, and I really have been enjoying this Black Widow series, uh, where uh, she's lost her memory because a bunch of her old villains have taken it away from her, and they've set up this fake life for her for reasons that they are arguing about in their little shadowy red room cabal. <laughs> while there's a lot of that happening in comics lately, have you noticed? <laughs> Like there's a lot well, of back rooms with people who aren't quite qualified who are just arguing with each other. And uh, while Bucky and Hawkeye watch from afar trying to decide if they should intervene or not, knowing that this is not her life, even if she's happy in it. I, I, I just think it's an interesting dynamic. It's fun. The art from Elan, Elena Casagrande is terrific. And here this is the, you know, the important issue where she has realized things are not, things are not as they should be. And also... One of the villains makes a dumb move against her family, and so that leads to her with a fantastic kitchen fight with a bunch of thugs. And I just, I just think this book's t- t- totally fun. This is why actual conspiracies don't happen because people have too much ego and they're stupid. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, it just doesn't work that way. I finished this book and I thought, wow, that was really good. I, I, mm-hmm. I was really just, you know, from from tip to tail. Really, uh, you know, Elena Casagrande just really like beautiful fight sequences, and and I just like the sort of bold thickness of her lines. And then Jordi Belair comes in and colors it, and uh, you know, there's none of that. It looks like animation cells, yeah. You know, it, it, and this weirdness that's going on, and and the fact that you know, um, Yelena, what's her name, come, you know, and, and it's really funny. Like they can't tell if she's a good guy or a bad guy, and because she's both, and that's really interesting too. Um, you know, it's it's a really good sort of spy story, and because of the fact that we've seen the fake baby husband thing before, but there's sure. stakes to it, and you know, because this character is who she is, there's a lot of you know, you know, what could have been with her, and they can't just pull her out because the baby, right? Elena, the other Black Widow, who was going to be in the movie that would have been out at the same time as this book, um, tested the baby's DNA because she's posing as the babysitter, and it's actually. Natasha's baby, even though it's impossible because she's only been missing for four months, the baby's, I mean, I mean, alive. Yeah. So, what does that mean? Is it some sort of grown clone, and is that going to be a problem when they try to pull her out? And it's so it's, it's, there's a lot of layers here, and it's that, a lot of fun. That fight in the house, uh, mm-hmm. digital reader page fourteen. There's like a double page spread with you know yep. like no panels, but uh, lots of act. That's amazing. That's a it's beautiful a bit of work. And it's got those little insets like, um, who's that guy who does them? Uh, he did Green Arrow. and then Yeah, he... yeah, yeah. That guy. Yeah. 
Where is he? Where is if you ask a direct question, then it'll immediately leave the brain. No, I know that, but so so that artist, I want to say it's like a like an Italian name or whatever. Yeah. Um, he started doing that. I think uh, who's the other guy does that? Um, David Aja does that. <laughs> David Aja does do that. Yeah. Well, so just like it's sort of taking in all of those uh, uh, influences and and making something really cool out of it that isn't just a st- straight you know rip off. Um, I love that as a kid, that those panels where you saw the character in multiple poses yeah, through yeah. movement and action. That's, that's what you and have to I, I always love the kitchen. Yeah, I loved um, that she's mostly a black shape. I think Miller did that yeah. a lot. Where, like, basically you just get, there's no outlines anymore. There's a little in this, but. Right. Um, yeah, I remember that happening a lot when I was a kid, too, in comics, where you just sort of got. You know, the, like the external overall shape, but not really anything in the middle to show that sort of action. It's really beautiful. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I just really I enjoy This is another great, really fun issue. Um, there's a lot of that for Marvel this week. It was a strong Marvel week. Yeah, it was. It absolutely was. Hey, guys, uh, if you didn't know, Singles Day is this Wednesday. Woo! Yeah, Josh, were you aware that Singles Day was this Wednesday? I'm not even aware of what being single means. <laughs> I, I, I you did were, not know this. You were a heck of a single day. person. You were very good Yeah, but at I, that. I didn't even know that we had a day back then. I thought every day was I'd have thought you'd have, I thought you were the captain of Singles Day. <laughs> I, would have, I would have had a little yacht cap on. <laughs> <laughs> I, would have been like, I would have been out there. But apparently it's a day now, and it's this Wednesday. That's cool. I wasn't familiar with the holiday, but it's exactly what it sounds like, a celebration of being single, which, I, again, I feel like is every day. <laughs> but, you haven't been married that long, and I think she <laughs> listens to the show, so you might want to tread lightly, pal. <laughs> I'm just saying, when you're single, anyway, uh, I'm going to stop before I get in trouble. So do it big and treat yourself to a killer deal from Mack Weldon. Whatever men's basics you need, Mack Weldon has you covered for unmatched comfort and fit. Josh and I, we, we've been talking about this for years. We're big Mack Weldon fans. Um, Josh, are you are you rocking anything currently at the de- at the moment? Of course I am. Well, of course, course I all am. your underwear needs are Mac Weldon at this point. I, yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm. I, it is always a part of my Mac Weldon is with me every day. That's what's mm. happening. Yeah. You know, you talked about a couple of times ago how it, you know the the winter was coming and mm-hmm. it was almost uh, you know sweatpant weather. Yeah. Well, that's that's that happened here in L.A. We we we've gotten some cool weather, and the other day I was like. I believe it's sweatpant weather, and I pulled them out like a sword, mm-hmm. you know, from my from my drawer. Shing. Held them up. <laughs> it it should be on. noted they're not stiff like a sword; they're comfortable and no, no, pliant no. and soft. But it was with the ceremony of a right. sword pull. Yes, I understand. And uh, put them on at a great day in my in my sweat Macwell and sweatpants. They're really they're really comfortable. I've had them now for years. They hold up. They're in great shape, and uh, they've got nice pockets with zippers, which is it, great for sweatpants. Here's the thing about uh, uh, being single. You know, you you might not want to be seen in your sweatpants, but right. it's not so with the Mac Weldon stuff. They will say, True. "Boy, if you're gonna wear sweatpants, that is that's a classy way to go about it, young man. How would you like to go on a second or third date, depending on when they came over?" <laughs> right. So, Mac Weldon is all about men's essentials: socks, shirts, hoodies, underwear, polos, active shorts. Mac Weldon promises comfort and a consistent fit. They've got versatility. They look great. They feel great from working out to going out, which is important for Singles Day. Going to work or on a date, all those things will one day return to life. And when you when they do, Mac Weldon's got your back. Technology. Mac Weldon's all about technology and, and finding ways to innovate with clothing. Wide range of customized fabrics that can keep up with you no matter what your day looks like. Got the 18-hour. Got the silver. Got the air knit X. Got the dry knit. Got the warm knit. They're all about the knits. Uh I've had I've several of those and really they they really work for the the specific purpose. The air knits fantastic in in the summer. Uh, I got I, they also just they they I got a marketing email from them just because that's what people get, and they have a, a new flannel shirt uh, that good. is very light and uh, has some insulation and it looked good and I was like oh ooh, that's my jam this, right there. This is what this is the fans we are. Josh, send me a marketing email. <laughs> I did look at this shirt. <laughs> And I did not do that because it was a thing we would talk about here. This was that was just a, a organic moment of things. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna offer. They haven't put this term up here, but I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is what they should build a marketing campaign around. Okay. It that all has the proper amount of snugness. Mm. It's the right amount Support. of snug. 
just snug. Supports it's, without without constraining. Yes, exactly. It's important. important. And and important. and it maintains the snugness. It doesn't doesn't stretch out. Yeah, like over time, it, it it they're still useful. Like it's it's I've had others, and it is not the case. Right? Are we, are we talking still about underwear? Like like singles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you know. You got to settle down. Is when you find the one that supports the snugness. <laughs> Doesn't you touch. Out. Let's move along. How about the well, Weldon Blue loyalty program, Connor? It's great. Totally yeah. free. It's a totally free loyalty program. Level one gets you free shipping for life. Once you reach level two by spending two hundred dollars, you get twenty percent off every order for the next year, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. And the guarantee from Mac Weldon is they, they want you to be comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep it, and they'll still refund you, no questions asked. It's almost like there, there's no reason not to give it a try because if you don't like it, they'll pay, give you your money back, and, and yeah, then you got a pair of underwear. You're gonna go. That is the right amount of snugness. He wasn't kidding. And exactly. then you're gonna so feel weird because I was talking about snugness, and you're anyway. So here's what you got to do. Score big this Singles Day, which is Wednesday, November 11th, and get 20% off your first order when you visit MacWeldon.com slash iFanboy and enter promo code iFanboy at checkout. That's MacWeldon.com slash iFanboy, promo code iFanboy for 20% off. MacWeldon, reinventing men's basics. Singles Day. Singles Day. Singles Day. All right. Fair uh, enough. Did, were you aware there was a new Sweet Tooth book coming? I think I had heard about it. Because I thought, when I saw it, I was like, oh, this must be some kind of reprint. You know how Marvel does those, like, yeah. reprinty issues? I thought, well, this is this is weird. But And then I was like, I think this is new. Yes. Sweet Tooth, the return book one from Black Label, uh, a.k.a. Vertigo from Jeff Lemire, Jose Villarubia, and Steve Wands. Is a return to Sweet Tooth, the seminal Vertigo series from Jeff Lemire, and a book we were we were big fans of at, at back at the, at the time. So this is a return. It's not, you know, it's not like American Vampire coming back because American Vampire sort of didn't end; it just sort of stopped. Whereas Sweet Tooth ended. It was like a full story arc. So one, I had I went back and I actually looked up the ending of Sweet Tooth. That would have been a good idea for me. Um, But it didn't really matter because the first page here says 300 years later. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to have the same characters. I have no idea. Yeah, it was. This is a six issue miniseries. Uh And it was regular length, which is unusual for Black Label. Usually Black Label's three issues in double length. But this is a six issues in regular length. Same amount of pages in the end. What you got here, kind of, is almost a, is almost a variation on the first issue of Sweet Tooth, really, where uh-huh. you got a kid with horns living in the woods. He's he's being protected by his overprotective guardian, and then he decides he wants to break out into the larger world, which is which is very similar to the first issue of the of the of the main book. Is it the same kid with horns? Looks like is, him, but is that Jeopard at the end? Looks like him. Wouldn't make sense three hundred years later. Why isn't this happening? Why is there this this society under underground that apparently he's living in, as opposed to the real woods? N- none of these questions are answered in these first twenty pages. But um, I guess I'll read the whole thing. I read the whole the whole first series, and I liked it a lot. But this one didn't grab me out of the gate. This one didn't. A lot this questions. one didn't grab me at all. Mm-hmm. I just. Maybe it'll come around or whatever, but I, I, I really did. you looked up something, but I was I didn't remember enough about. I kind of remember how it ended, but not enough to make any connections between this. Well, and as that. it turned out, none of it was none of it mattered. Right. Well, that's the point. So then, this just felt like they were telling the same story again, and it wasn't as compelling. Um, again, not to say it wouldn't, but as a sort of single issue to meant to sort of grab me into a new thing. You know, the final page reveal of the guy who looks like Jeopard or what, you know, end of the story, you know, okay. I, you know, I, I I would like it to be good, but I would like it to be, I would like to give me something new. Give me something else, you know. The well, sort of, I'm looking for a reason. That's exactly like, what that's I'm saying. I'll be looking for for this, over this six issues is why, why are, you, are we doing this? Right. You only got six issues here. So you're basically telling a short story. So what is the purpose? You can't, you can't. 
we can't be building this giant world like he did with the first time. It was like what was it, like sixty issues or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, again, I I also read Sweet Tooth and Trade, so it's a very different reading experience for me to read just twenty pages of the story. But I just want I'm just curious as to as to what, why we're doing this. I mean, yeah, but I think we're both willing to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. And also, yeah. like, if you if you you look at it, it's it's as if it's nothing has changed. Like like <laughs> the, the art is still the art, and the coloring is the same. And yeah. you know, so you don't have to like get used to an, another person drawing it or whatever. Like it is sweet tooth. There's no doubt about it. Now, what are you going to give me that you didn't already give me? Right. Why 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 are we back? Yeah. yeah. I, but, haven't, I haven't read press on it. I don't know if he's like, oh, I had this great idea, but you know. He's certainly not l- lacking for work. No, no. He's in the time that we've been recording the show. He's released three Black Hammer series. Right. So I'm curious to see what's going on here. Um, I'm not ready to write it off, even though if I didn't, I didn't really love the first issue. Yeah, that's fair. I me too. So um, that Texas Blood, I don't have a lot on it. Number five issue came out, and I was kind of. It starts very violently. Like literally, a guy is fantasizing about you know drowning in a, in a river of blood or you know right. whatever, and and I I was like, wait, is this the same guy? Right. Like there was a very quick turn that took place between the issues, and I found that jarring because I I didn't. I, I I was I took me a minute to get my bearings, and then I realized like no, this is the same guy, but it was really dark and really fast, and I don't mind what happened with the story, but I felt like it. I felt like it jumped forward a lot since the last issue. I'm going to say something slightly controversial. Go for it. I think this is a good book. I don't think it's a well-written book. Mm-hmm. Go, like go. I really, I really enjoy it, and I, I like this character, and I, I, I'm giving it probably a lot of leeway because it's a straight-up crime book, mm-hmm. and there's not a lot of those out there, and I'm desperate for them. But I don't necessarily think it's a well-written book. I, I think it's a, I think it's an adequately written book. I think I think uh, the dialogue is extremely strong. I think it's a really good, like the the voices of the characters, the sheriff, the other people around. I think the dialogue is really really strong, and that might mask some of the plotting and pacing mm-hmm. uh, that a new writer needs to learn. I, by the way, like this is exactly how I characterize all of my writing. Too. Like I could mask a lot with dialogue and stuff like that. And when you look back at people like Bendis, they had really strong dialogue, but on top of it, they he uh, had really strong dialogue. But then on top of it, you know, like he had great pacing in plots, um, which I think this might be missing so far. We had, we had a lot of build up to this guy's girlfriend show, showing up, and then she shows up, and then she's just dealt with and leaves. Like it was like, what was the point of any of that? That uh, was I'd... yeah. I'm not. It's not a huge criticism. I mean, I, I I do enjoy it, and when it comes out, I'm very happy to read it. And I I did. Me too. Enjoy reading it, but I just finished it. And I was like, I don't know that this book is that well written. Well, we don't but, know that the girlfriend is gone for good. That I mean, sure. that would be a huge mistake if she just took off there. But uh, or just as an uh, an example of like how he fell, you know. I don't know. I don't know what's. I don't. I don't know what to expect. I think that you're right. I think there are. I think there are growing pains. I think this is a, a sort of learning process. But you know. Is a you know is a first sort of comic to put out. It's it's pretty it's pretty strong. Yeah, I, I'm not. It's again. It's, I don't think it's a bad book. Yeah. I just think it's 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 there's some cracks. Sure, absolutely, I agree. Needs some seasoning. So we, Josh and I both checked out Red Atlantis number one from AfterShock Comics, written by Stephanie Phillips, who's quickly turning into a really interesting writer. With art by Robert Carey, and colors by Rosh, and letters by Troy Petery. 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 I like Petery. Okay. I'm, I bet he I mean, doesn't. it's not my choice, but <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to say. Petery. <laughs> Go on. Say it. Say it. Petery. See? Fun. Yeah. So I didn't know anything about this book at all. Uh, I just saw the cover. It's got, uh, you know, the Kremlin and the White House and the Russian star and a bunch of people running, or one person running and a bunch of people's faces. So I think we saw, saw you know, it's a crime a raw, brutal thriller from tomorrow's headlines. Oh, we'll give it a shot. I, I literally just saw Stephanie Phillips' name, and I said, "Hey, you yeah. know what? This has been some good stuff lately. Let's give it another shot." Um, and then I found out at the end that it's like a adaptation of some other. It's, it's a, a film pitch. pitch. Yeah, it's a film pitch. pitch by some Russians, and I didn't really enjoy it as I was reading it. And then I got to the end, and I saw that part, and I was like, "Oh, that's why. This isn't her story." Yeah. No, and it, it it's was glaringly obvious. 
She's right. She's just adapting a pitch. And I don't. I, this isn't anything against her. Take the work. Take the work. Take the paid work. Yeah. Get your name yeah, on sure. as many things as possible. But it is missing that that core. I think uh, that you know that I've I've come to like in her writing. Um, and it was five dollars for twenty pages, and that's stupid. Yeah, um, there's a lot of back matter and a preview doesn't make up for the five dollars. Um, I. Yeah, back matter and that yeah. stuff is not something I'm going to pay for. That, no, that's, that's extra. That's, that's on you. I also didn't think the art was that good. Um, I thought... Okay. I'm looking for the artist's name. Robert, Robert Carey, Carey is better at characters' faces and talking. When it came to action stuff, it was a lot less good mm-hmm. for me. But it wasn't bad. It just was like, oh, like there'd be an interesting talking scene, and that was good. And then there was a fight in the park, and I was like, oh, this is not great. I feel like I used to read, just in, as a matter of course, uh, more things that were very obviously um, film pitches or TV pitches. And... Yeah, there was a while at, Mar- at Image where it was yeah. like, it was like not ten, was it 10 years ago? Something like it that. It might have been 10 years ago, 15 years ago, where it was clearly there was a string of film pitches out of image and a couple of them got optioned and those guys never wrote another comic and yes um and i i think i got very um aware of that and so like i avoided it and i just i just didn't see it coming well i actually read a little bit of the interview in the back Mm -hmm. i couldn't help myself i i I, like glanced over it and i saw okay well the the guy who came up with the story is an ex kgb slash fsb agent i was like well that's interesting so let me just glance at this and his whole thing was like spy spy stories and movies are all they're always completely wrong, and so I wanted to do a different kind of spy story. And I was like, "Well, you 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 didn't though." It's <laughs> it's, the, it's the same. I know. I mean, it opens up with almost a supernatural situation. It's probably technological, but it comes yeah. off a of supernatural where these people are voting. It's it's voting day. It's it, it's it's it was timely. It came out on the week of voting day we, in America and it's voting in the, in the story. And there's a bunch of like, by the way, that as a timing tie in, that doesn't work for me at all. <laughs> I, the like, I really, like, I was like, I really want to read about con about controversy and violence at the polls this week. Are you yeah. serious that you thought that was a good idea? So a bunch of people just start attacking each other randomly after their phones buzz them and they get the anti-life equation. In exactly. Them. Uh, it's exactly from deceased and so they all start fighting each other and beating each other and killing each other and and then there's some sort of tie into this this college student and there's two fbi agents and there's a there's a houston detect as the there's a houston cop who is not at all like any cops in houston i ever met this guy comes off like a small town bumpkin you know, chief of police, and Houston it's a like, large metropolitan area. Houston is the, on some days, the third largest city in America, the most, and it's the most racially and ethnically diverse city in America as well. Um, and this guy comes off like he's running the like a like like a Mayberry. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a little. I just have spent a lot of time in Houston, but that's that's um, that didn't ring true for me. And then the story was fine. It was really short. And again, I read the interview. I was like, but. but, but what what is this book? So, <laughs> I mean, that's the same pitch for the Americans. Like the dude was CIA, and this is what it right. is. But that was better. Apparently, Stephanie Phillips has a very solid background in martial arts. She choreographed the fight scenes with ninety nine point nine percent authenticity. Authenticity. See, she's fascinating. I'm yeah. I'm a I'm a fan. Like I don't I don't put this on her. Yeah, I was bummed because I was like, oh, well, maybe it'll be an awesome, you know spy story i agree that'll be cool because she's been doing lots of different genres yeah and it just wasn't well what are you gonna do what are you gonna do i just want to mention real quickly young justice 20 was the final issue brian bendis david walker co-writer scott godlewski was the artist and you know the the bendis experiment at at image at, at dc you'll get there eventually it's it's early um is what it is. We've been enjoying a lot of it. Some of it hasn't worked. Clearly hasn't moved the needle in the culture or the sales charts. But I really enjoyed this Young Justice book. It was a team book. That was the one thing. You know, Superman's not a team book. Legion of Superheroes is in some ways the ultimate team, but he's not writing it that way because there's, there's just too many characters. But this is <clears throat> very much in his Avengers wheelhouse. You know, there's a group of six or seven characters. They all bounce off each other with dialogue. They're all, a lot of them are old friends, so you get that kind of relationship. There's new characters who are new to the hero game. 
And they they just been sort of hanging. Out. We've been hanging out with them through various adventures, and this is a wrap up issue where they get their their base back for the, from Avengers, um, from Justice League Mountain, and Red Tornado shows up. He's sort of their been their mentor, and then John Stewart shows up to get back the technology that the Teen Lanterns been using to hack the power battery and Oa. And it's just it, it was nothing of consequence really happened because it was the final issue wrap up, and they just sort of hung, got to hang out in the, at the base and. And it was fun. I, I really like this book a lot. I'm, I'm a bum that's over. Well, I didn't read it, so that's my fault. That's fine. No, that's fine. I think I read the first issue. Yeah. It's not, you know, I'm yeah. a big Jungle Justice fan, so I understand. Yeah, yeah. So those are the books we want to talk about. We could have talked about more. It was a big week, but we have the Patreon pick to talk about. Patreon.com slash iFanboy. That's where every patron can vote to add a book to the rundown. And this week, they voted overwhelmingly for crossover number one from Image Comics, Donnie Cates, Jeff Shaw, Del Cuniff, John J. Hill. Was this on your radar? Were you going to read it without the patron pick? But... I mean, I, I probably would have. Oh, uh, Mark Wade on story edits. Well. I didn't notice that before. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I, I wasn't aware of it before you mentioned it, but I don't usually look at things before I sort of start to pick out which books I'm going to read anyway, but I would have totally read this. I knew this was this. coming. I knew that he had a bit, that Donny Cates had a big image book coming. He, I honestly, the the most surprising thing about this was um, the bit at the end. I was like, oh, you have like a whole empire. Like, he has a bunch of new image books coming out. At the same time, he's running all this stuff at Marvel. I don't know if some of that work's ending or what. He's got two right. podcasts that he does. Like, it's a whole... It's right. he's, he's got a whole Donny Cates brand. And, I don't, like, I don't know... He is one of the most genuinely enthusiastic and energetic people I know. Right. Like, he... he like, I remember when I first sort of saw him on the scene and I saw how, like pumped i'm making air quotes you know he seemed to be about everything and i was like oh come on and then you know like i, I talked to him i met him i was like oh no he's really like that right you know, like he's just super happy and excited and he's got a lot of ideas um and it's kind of cool to see but so let's let's you know narrow in on this book um right now if you were to ask me to tell you what the premise was i don't know that i could do it right <clears throat> well so first of all I, I i really like the cover yeah it's uh a kid reading a comic, oh, this comic, it's a very meta, uh, and his face is getting blown off. And, you know, that's sort of the you know, metaphor for us. He's, he's smiling, though, kid. and that's the... Right, because like, he's, he's yes! getting his face blown off by a comic. Yep. That's so that was good. cool. So the, the idea here is that one day, is it outside of Denver, or is it Denver itself? I think it's, this... it's, it is it is Denver itself, Denver, Colorado, in 2017. All of the superheroes... From Marvel and DC appear in a town, suddenly real and alive in, a, in the midst of a giant battle, in the midst of a giant crossover, one might say, and end up destroying the town, causing lots of death. And one of the heroes puts a protective force field over the town to, to trap them inside. Now we jump three years later, and comic fandom is is a it's it's looked down upon. It, you know you're. There's only one comic store left in this in this in Provo, Utah, where the to- story takes place. It's the only store comic store that, that sells pre uh, event comics. Event meaning the thing that happened in Denver. And you know, there's a girl walking on the street. She's got a domino mask on. A guy throws a bottle at her, and she works at the comic store. There's a sign that says "God hates masks" on like a billboard. And then there's there's you know, um, protesters outside the comic store. So it, be- it becomes this whole thing about comic fandom and. And then at the area, the, the big, the big uh, reveal, and this is a spoiler if you haven't read the book, is that uh, in the comic store one, uh, this, on this day, there's a little girl with a hoodie on, and it's revealed that she's a character, one of the characters from the comics who has escaped the bubble. She's got dot pitch face, <laughs> and it freaks out everybody, and they run out, and then a, and a religious zealot throws a Molotov cocktail through the window and burns the comic store down. Yeah. And then it's revealed that the, the person who helped the girl escape the bubble may or may not be Superman. So I liked it. I, again, much like when I was reading Thor, Thor, also by Donny Cates, which I, I didn't, this is, this is totally. I did. Uh, when you were talking about that book, I was like, I'm going to have the same thing. All the, all the mechanics were in the back of my head and I couldn't, I couldn't wash them away to just enjoy the book. And I was like, well, how are you going to do this if all these characters are Marvel and DC characters? Well, he's and he's certainly towing a legal line there. It's not like he, he doesn't understand how that works. Um, and it's not like it's not, I mean, Mark Wade did it with, you know, irredeemable at the end. Sure. Like you can, you can certainly 
uh, but he's naming honor them. these characters and mention them, and I don't you you can't show them, and you, obviously when you see the big fight in Denver, the double page spread, none of those characters are Marvel mm-hmm. or DC characters. Um, but you know, was, that was just a minor thing in the back of my head. I was like, how are they going to do this? Well, a couple things. Uh, I mean, a you know, like the, he tells a little story in the back. Ugh, I'm I'm tired of doing this, but it is interesting in this case. Uh, and I, I think he told me this on the talks float that we did. Um, where he got really, really ill and ended up in the hospital and nearly died. And, you know, after that, he was thinking about death. And then in the last year, he got, he didn't explain this one, but he, he got really ill and was in the hospital again. And after that, he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy about life or whatever. And so he's mm-hmm. trying to do this thing, which is clearly celebrating comics. In fact, he was also a retailer. Like, mm-hmm. he, he managed stores for quite a while. Like, he, he understands comic book retailing. And so, like, when they go into that comic shop, I'm like, who's writing this from an from a actual perspective of somebody who knows something? And, and I applaud all of the ideas behind that. I applaud the idea behind the cover. I think that's... I, I see what he's doing. Mm-hmm. It might be a little too on the nose for me to get behind. The it, book itself? Yeah. I, I mean, like... I, I don't really need a book celebrating superheroes and comic books because I can do that through the superhero comic books that I read that make me feel that way. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, like kind of when I when I come to you know to an Image comic or somebody like you guys are these guys are already doing superhero comics over there, so you know you can celebrate it that way. It's like like a rock song about really great rock songs, and it's it's it can work. It can absolutely work, but it's tough. It, I'm I'm skeptical from the from the get go, and again, what you said is right. Like it's it's a really well done book. It's and I think like there's a little device that he has where he's sort of explaining what's going on, and then he says, "But that's not what this story is about." And it, I like that because it brings you along. Like like you need right. to know this, but this isn't like this isn't the thing you need need to remember yet. Like this is it. And so, because you you could easily go, oh, this is what the story is. And that's not it. It's the it's the Stan Lee thing where the the, the comic talks to talks to you. Yeah, but it, it also just keeps you on a track and yeah. lets you know where yeah. to, where to put your attention to. And I and I, again, I like that as a device. I think it's very effective. I think he's got an enormous amount of skill going into this. But as a sort of overall premise, I, if you told me about it, I don't know that I'd be that interested. I mean, unfortunately, I think. I mean, I, I say this as a as a guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'll be wrong. It's, it's going to lose a lot of its power if you can't actually feature any of these characters. You know, if it's all mm-hmm. like vague superheroes in, in random suits like you see so far, despite the fact that we're, we're mentioning actual superheroes, it's going to lose a lot of its impact for me. I'm not. I'm not worried about that part. I think. I think that has to be part of the plan from the beginning. And and you know, like you said, like doing analogs of these characters or or you know hinting at them is fine it's sort of it's almost like that they're there in the background is more important than anything else as opposed to mm-hmm. like a thing where the studio 60 thing where they're talking about how funny all the sketches are and then they aren't you know like that i don't right. know it, there's a real fine line of show don't tell and vice versa with this but i'm i'm sure he can do it i mean it'll be interesting to see if this is a thing he can pull off that's really where i'm at right now Rather than I'm into it, I'm I'm into I want to see like the mechanics of it, which is not what he wants to be going for. I don't think. And we should mention Jeff Shaw, who's his oh. like you know collaborator. He did uh, God Country with him, and he did some of those Marvel books. Was it the Thanos, Thanos. book? Yep. He, yep. Yeah, he's terrific. I I mean like the the he's... reveal of the little girl with the face. Yep. I was like yes. You're, I mean, like he was it was literally talking to me in my language. I was like that's a really <laughs> interesting thing I haven't seen and. Just the 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 um, the aesthetic of those images, I thought was fantastic. So, like again, it's just it's good stuff in there. I don't know that I'm in love. So, are you gonna? I assume you're gonna read more of that. I am. I am. It. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. We'll see if it's academic or passionate. We'll see which way it goes. So let's do ratings. Ratings. On God, let's God Country crossover number one ratings. This is tough. Mm-hmm. It's Out tough. of five, yeah, it is tough. Three and a half. Three point seven five. There you go. Sticking with it, yes. Yep. Although, like you, a little with a little skepticism. Is it ongoing? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, I don't know how long it's going. It goes as long as anything goes. Ima- like image ongoing, then. Like it doesn't say it, up it, six. It doesn't say like one of five or anything. It's just it's just going to go until it 
either it finishes or it just never it stops coming out, like mm-hmm. all image books. Uh, Patreon.com slash iFanboy. That's where you can go to add a book to the rundown. Any patron can vote, but if you give it the $5 or higher level, you can get your super, own superpower live on the show, um, as we're going to give today to two people who are a voting block for the patron pick. They always vote together. <laughs> and so they always, you know, they can always be counted on for two votes from them. Josh is going to kick it off. Emmett Golden Marks, um, <laughs> a very shiny communist, um, <laughs> can, can count instantly. Count instantly. Yeah, like, so if you look at the jelly beans in the jar, mm-hmm. or I don't know, a stack of official paperwork, it'll tell you instantly what that is. He never, like, he's not allowed to play the jelly bean jar counting game to win a prize at the fair. Because right. they know... He, he can do it with 100% accuracy. And if he could be sent around the country in a... For country, all your counting needs. Yeah, oh yeah, no, he's... Yeah, oh no, the, the, the count of Sesame Street's got nothing on this guy. And it has to be a visual, like a visual count. Like he, he has to look at a thing and he can count that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he couldn't look at a computer and count the bits. Like it has to be... But you're saying he can look at, a, let's say, a stack of papers and count them. But yeah. he could count... Well, you're saying is you count the number of papers, not necessarily what's oh, written on those papers. That's a good point. So you, they would have to be face up, and then it would be a, a dot counting thing. So you're you're saying, or if he if he saw the marks, he could instantly count. Like he he'd yes. be able to see them all laid out. But maybe what would be more appropriate would be if you made a stack of each, like say for example that there were two different things that you were looking for on those particular documents like one had right. one choice or, and the other had the board. sure that works that way too and you put them in the stacks so everyone mm-hmm. who had marked i don't know let's say the red box mm-hmm. and then everybody who marked we'll say the blue box just for instance right. sure uh if Pick you just color. you just put those into two stacks right and then he would tell you oh there's this many i think it was blue i said yeah, I mean yeah, blue. Right, there's this many blue and then this many red. I think it was red. But it's counting. Okay. So you can it's very specific <laughs> counting power. <laughs> Good luck sorting that one out, Chris. I feel kind of bad about this power, but I it made me laugh in my head, so I'm just going to go with it. We sure. don't like to have the powers based on the names. It's a cheap way out. You know, other people in the powers game do that. We don't we 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 try to elevate our powers game. <laughs> But Jesse, who's in the powers game? <laughs> Jesse Golden Marks. Jesse Golden Marks can turn into any member of the Marx Brothers. <laughs> See, I think it's very interesting that I immediately went to the father of communism, Karl Marx, and you went to the the people who made duck soup. And Beppo. Uh, they <laughs> Beppo, Groucho, yeah, Harpo, Chico. Is it's a very a chi- valuable wait, power. Was there a Chico? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, you're right. Chico was Chico was the was the Italian one. Can I tell you something? And, yeah, I've never seen a Marx Brothers movie, ever, and I feel bad about it. Like it's always like I really got to do that sometime. I think it's like I've never read War and Peace, but I probably should at some point. And, and it isn't. I don't like it. It isn't anything other than I just I haven't done it. War and Peace is the only book I've ever been able to finish. I have not I been able to finish right. two books: uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And uh-huh. the original um, Herbert Asbury, uh, Gangs of New York. I was unable to finish that. Oh, I finished that one. The there's books I've stopped reading by choice. Like this sure. is this is terrible. As opposed to, I I want to read this book. I cannot. Mm-hmm. I was. I, it was. No one needs to hear the story. I was 21, reading it on the subway to and from work every day, and literally falling asleep every time <laughs> trying to read it. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, I'm a different person now. Maybe it'd be all right now, but I remember trying to read it at 21. Like, I got, I should read War and Peace, and I was just like <gasps> on the I subway read, every time. I, read I read some James Joyce around that same period, and I finished it, but I, I couldn't tell you a single thing about it. I read Dubliners and um, the other one, uh, but it was, it was very difficult. Anyway, Jesse, you turn to the Marx Brothers whenever the situation uh, calls for it, which is great because. You could be Zeppo Marx, the the suave debonair regular Marx brother. You know, if you needed to be a suave debonair guy, but you could already you could you could be the the ultimate mime in Harpo Marx 
or the ultimate, um, you know, madman in, in, in Groucho or, you know, or, or Chico, the, mm-hmm. the criminal. But also really, the Italian one is the criminal? The Italian one with the Spanish they're, name? They're all criminals. I see. But, do you uh, have a do you do you have a, a recommendation for which is the best Marx Brothers movie? Well, I mean, today? everyone says Duck Soup is the best. My favorite is The Night at the Opera. It's the one I watched the most, most as a kid. Uh-huh. Um, you, you really can't go wrong with Duck Soup or The Night at the Opera. They're they're not long movies. Well, I think one of their movies is like is like seventy minutes or something like yeah. that. But um, it, I'd be very curious to see what you think. It's not. You know, it's it's super vaudeville. They just took their vaudeville acts and they started yeah. doing the, the jokes on movies screen. So My, they're very, uh, very specific. My humor. good friend and Eisner Award winning cartoonist Alex Robinson. Mm-hmm. Notice I didn't mention anything about his podcasts. Um, right. Is a huge fan of of Marx Brothers movies, and so uh, they're they're the 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 verbal dexterity and the and the nonstop jokes and. Um, the physical comedy. They were they were mm-hmm. incredible. I mean, they were we talk about this all the time yeah. and we're totally derailing and probably killing now the email segment. But um <laughs> they, they they were that they were that generation of entertainers that could do everything. They could sing, yeah. they could dance, they could tell jokes, they could do Pratt Falls, they they, they they did everything. You could you had to be able to do everything on the vaudeville circuit. So it's not like actors today who just can act really well. It's like they could all play musical instruments expertly, they could all sing, you know, they could they could do physical comedy. They could yeah. do verbal comedy. So it was like they, they were like sort of the, and, the ultimate. Uh, and, and to be fair, this isn't this isn't a thing like I didn't want to watch it because it's old or whatever. Yeah. I mean, like if you like if you could watch a Chaplin movie right now and you will be on the floor like he, he's yeah. it's that funny. So I, I have no doubt that it'll be good. I just haven't done it. So I will do it. And it's, it's also very specific. It's 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 vaudeville. It's vaudeville. vaudeville. So, you know, it's it's very broad. Yeah. I'd be curious to see what you think. All right. I'll, uh, I'll there's always singing that. in it. And there's always, you know. Anyway, we'll, we'll 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 talk about that later. Anyway, Emmett and Jesse, thanks for being patrons. Patreon.com slash ifanboy. Uh, that's where you can go and give it the $5 higher level and get you in superpower. Or sometimes you hear us talk about other things. I mean, I do want to point out, though, that there, I, there was no metaphor implied in that counting sure. power. I didn't I, – I just don't want people to think that it's related to anything. It was just all those things I said were random. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, patrons – who, from whom uh, they, they make that pick and they uh-huh. get those powers. That yeah. happens when uh, a listener to the show who loves sometimes the listener in a podcast love each other very much and they go to patreon.com slash ifanboy and uh, you, you say, hey, I, I like what you do. I'd like to, I'd like to help contribute uh, to the general fund. We're going to start yeah. sending out emails. Hey, friend. The general fund. Yeah, we should start doing that. Actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, Every five minutes. Yep. Stop still getting them. <laughs> uh, and you want to support the show. You want to, you, you like what we do and you want it to keep going. And so you go there at the level with which you feel comfortable. Um, and and uh, I, we say it every week, but I cannot, I cannot emphasize enough how much we appreciate it. And thank you so much. Uh, if more people want to come and do that, then there are more stretch goals to be reached. G.I. Joe Corner would be the next show that we would develop and come up with. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then after that, we would promise you the uh, quarterly barbecue show in whatever way that uh, the world allows us to do that when that happens. Right. I um, mean, we can't do it like we'd want to do it. We do it the best way we can. Yes. Until until things are, are different. I will tell you, it would be difficult to set up a propane grill in my office where the recording equipment is. But, you know, <laughs> these are problems we need to solve. <laughs> You'd have to use your phone outside. Aging hipster podcaster dies of asphyxiation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this means really uh... <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> Just the loud sound of your forehead hitting the desk. <laughs> Meat dribbling out of my mouth. <laughs> he died happy, though. Ron moving along with the show. <laughs> yeah. We finished the show, obviously. We're professionals. <laughs> patreon.com slash ifanboy uh, there's also the t-shirt and sundry store over at ifanboy.threadless.com there are eight designs there uh, there's the uh, stay home and read comic shirt which is ironic which oddly still relevant at this point and I, I'm, I'm sorry about that I have to say I'm really happy to report that several people on the discord channel said that they wore the nothing makes sense nothing matters shirt to go vote I think now that's... do I necessarily agree with that nihilistic view of the world right now I don't know but I, I appreciate the effort right in fact, I made the shirt. My it was my it was my phrase, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's the shirt. It's the shirt for our times, no matter what happens. Apparently, definitely, 
Uh, you don't want to deal with any of that rigmarole, get over to ifanboy.com slash support. You'll find a direct donation link for uh, PayPal. And then finally, uh, if you, like me, are strongly relying on people bringing things to your house to find joy, uh, you can go to ifanboy.com slash Amazon, where you will find uh, links to buy the books from the Booksplodes and a general link to Amazon to see if stuff can make you happy or just to get garbage bags and uh, dog mm-hmm. meds. That's also good for that, too, if you don't want to go into stores because people are savages. Stay indoors. <laughs> so are we skipping email and going right to the end, or what's happening? You're the producer. I, I, think, I think we should we should save this. I think that, okay, that question, this. yeah, we're, we're going, yeah. We're going so, long on the book talk. Yeah, right. so, which is, which is you know, probably preferable. Uh, go to contact con- at ifanboy.com. Sorry, I just was, I didn't know if you were going there or not. I, we, we've, we've lost control of the show. Contact well, at ifanboy.com. Well, it's, it's correct to assume that I would not do the thing I'm supposed to do. Contact, contact at ifanboy.com. <laughs> You do you contact uh, so listen, uh, there's a lot of special edition podcasts over the last month and a lot more coming. Uh, Talks Below with Gene Lu and Yang came out early in October. I will probably not mention it again. Then Connor and I did a book explode on Pulp, uh, the animated brain trust story on Batman, Death in the Family, and our last media explode on Ted Lasso and West Wing and the West Wing special, Beacons in the Darkness. Is yes. what I will say about those things. Uh, I will need to it makes schedule. Me so happy to see the people talking about checking out Ted Lasso based on the show and oh. then saying the same exact thing. Everybody, yeah, like like Lindsay, uh, my my darling wife. Uh, we watched like the first one, and she's like, ah, I don't care what this is. And I, after I was like, I went back and I was like, you need to watch it, which meant I got to watch it again too. Uh, and it was the same thing. She's at the end. She's like, it was just perfect. And I was like, I know. So everybody out there uh, needs to get on that. It's it's like, it's yeah, it's Coach Taylor, but in England and funny. <laughs> so this month in November, we are one month into November. And this month, well, we're one month. We're one week. Into, it feels like it's been a month into November. Sure. We are a week into November, and we're still going to get you a Talksplode. Uh, right? I mean, yeah. A Talksplode. There will be a Talksplode. Between now, I really feel like I just got that last one finished, and it kind of snuck up on me. Uh, there will I be one. I think it wasn't that one late. It was like the very first or second day of October. It was only only because of scheduling. Actually, so that's why it feels like it because it's only been it's only right. Been a month, it was but. late because I wanted to watch the first debate. I had to move the show back two days. So anyway, there'll be a talk explode this month supposedly. There'll be a hangout. This month, supposedly, and there'll be a media explode this month, supposedly. We haven't scheduled any of those things. They will all happen. At this point in the year, they might get spread out over time a little bit, I think. It's fair the to media, say. The, the, the hangout will probably happen sooner rather than later because we got we got to do it before the holidays. And the, I don't know about the media explode. That's going to be tough. We're, these will all come out. It's just a matter of figuring out when yep. they will come out. But we, and we've, we've, never, we've never not delivered a show. That'll happen. The the December books blow is actually already in the can, so that one's definitely coming out. Nice. So you'll get those. You'll get all the shows contractually obligated to you through the patrons. <laughs> Head over to ifanboy.com to find all of our podcasts. Find out what the pick of the week is before the show comes out by liking facebook.com slash ifanboy or following at ifanboy on Twitter, ifanboy comics on Instagram, which also features the best weekend panels. And individually, we are C.S. Kilpatrick on Instagram and Jay Flanagan on Instagram. He is no longer on any other social platform. So That's if you right. want to find Josh, he's only on Instagram. That's right. Also, Kill subscribe all. to our YouTube page. YouTube.com slash iFanboy. You up to date with the old video show uploads. And this past week was a good one. We had our very first interview with Stan Lee at New York Comic Con. It was oh, a wow. mini episode interview. And then we had a Leave Extraordinary, Leave Extraordinary Gentleman show, which is uh, appropriate for the for the passing of Sean Connery, the movie that killed his career. And then, well, it's not about the movie, but the book. But <laughs> And then one of my favorite shows we ever did, it might, oh. be, it might be the best one we ever did, the... DC Cities slash Marvel Comics Guide to New York City show, where we had half the show was a quiz about DC Cities. We did a game show, which Ron did very badly. And then we, we went out into the field with the Marvel Comics Guide to New York City and checked out the places, the real places in New York that inspired the places in the comics. And it was one of the, the funniest shows we did. The, the extended, indulgent uh, blooper reel at the end, which you see how difficult it is to shoot live in New York City <laughs> without a permit. <laughs> Is was a lot of fun. So that's one of my favorites. If you've never a, watched the show before, I would urge you to go to the YouTube page, youtube.com slash ifanboy, and check out the, the, the latest episode, the DC City's Marvel Comics Guide to New York episode. It was one of my favorites. I'm going to watch that. It's very fun. If you like this show, you like what we do, write a review or leave a star rating on Apple Podcasts, which 
really is pretty much the only place to do that. But uh, but you may feel free to download it wherever you'd like. But if you're if you're part of that system, that always helps. Um, better yet, tell your friends about it if you're still using social media, which you, I probably should. I, I hate social media right now, so I'm <laughs> gonna uh, go back on that. Uh, but if you're using it and you want to tell people about it, that is awesome. We appreciate the people who do. Uh, if uh, spread the iFanboy word, that would be that would be the best thing uh, for folks to do. And and uh, I'm saying do things for us is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm saying come in, send money, buy in things. Spirit of the holidays. Us. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, who's giving you more than us? Who gives you more than us? There's a Jim Gaffigan. We give and we give and we give. There's a Jim Gaffigan joke where he says something like, "Has your mother ever cooked anything better than a McDonald's French fry?" And I and I feel like I relate that to you know, like, has anybody spent as much time with you and made you laugh more than us? No, no, I don't think so. Well, you know what? Probably. Actually, it's very likely. If it's... your mother dumped a half a pound of salt on everything, then it would taste as good as a McDonald's French fry. Listen, you can claim to love America, but <laughs> what you're saying doesn't back it up. You just got, you got to accept it part and parcel. I'm just saying it's hot, it's potato, and it's got a pound of salt on it. Of course it tastes good. Well, yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't taste good. I'm saying there's reasons why. Well, right. Are we, are we, are we better than... If one is a McDonald's French fry... <laughs> <laughs> if one is Electro and one is also a McDonald's French fry... Right. Is that is I fanboy a ten or a zero? I'm not saying I'm not prepared to say that. Well, this is a whole other podcast until we do food explode. Mm-hmm. Food. <laughs> Can, should we end this? Do you want to say yeah, we say your name? Oh yeah, I'm Connor. I'm Josh. Stay safe. Stay indoors. Wash your hands. Please, dear God, wear your mask. Uh, do the things you're supposed to. Six feet is six feet. Help! You don't. You don't. You. We are these people. We're the only people who can help because nobody else is going to help us. We have to help each other. Not. Not even. It's not even a joke. Man.